let's begin by having a look at the history palette which is useful for jumping back and forth between your edits a number of steps at a time. I'll show you how it works. So here I have a sample document I created with a number of different elements that I've been moving about as you can see on the history panel. If I click up on this move, then the document moves to where I was at that stage. If I come up here to free transform, then you can see it looked quite different at that point. If I come back down to the final option, it's right back to where I last left it. So you can move forward and back to the stages you were at when you last had it. Notice that once you save the document and reopen it, the history palette is clear. I'll show you. stick it on my desktop so I can find it quickly. And I'll close it. Now I'll open it. What did I call it? Demonstration. And you'll see no history. Once you save it, you're locking down the state where it was. Much of the power of digital image editing lies in the layers concept. Layers are like sheets of transparent paper. You can see through layers to the layer below. You can move a layer to position its contents, which allows you to composite multiple images together to form one complex image or to add text to an image. Sometimes layers can even contain adjustments which then change the appearance and don't change the underlying picture. I'll show you how layers work. So here I have another image that's made up of a number of different layers. I can't quite see them all. I'll just move the navigator palette so that I can lengthen the layer palette so we can see them all. So you can see here we have a white background layer, the barn, a layer with goods on it, the farmer, the boy on the tractor, and a text layer. Okay. Each layer can be separately showed shown or hidden. So if I deselect this checkbox, the barn disappears and all we see are the elements we've added to the barn. If I deselect the farmer, he disappears and all we can see is the other set of goods. Again, the boy. Sometimes you might want to temporarily turn off visibility of layers so that you can work more clearly with the layers you have left. For example, if we wanted to work with the boy on the tractor, he's much easier to see without the barn. We can zoom in on him and we can see him and work with him without the barn behind him distracting us. I'll just zoom back out so we can see the whole thing and I'll turn on the barn again. So that's the show hide. Let's go to view show all so we can see the picture big. Okay. You can also add a new layer by using this icon. When you add a new layer, it's added immediately above the active layer, that is the layer you were sitting on, and it's a transparent layer. You can delete layers by clicking on the trash icon and it deletes the layer that is selected, in this case, that new layer I just added. You can also add layer effects. Let's go to the text layer and see what a drop shadow effect would do. Well, if we made it pale blue, It might be a little more attractive there and you can control the opacity there that's better bring it a little closer size I think is fine let's look at the angle effects I like that better there so that's pretty nice isn't it effects on the text this is layer mask we're not going to get into layer masks because we're only doing a couple of weeks of looking at pixel 